Hey, how about a reading for me, your metal dog? Metal dog, it's Chinese astrology, if you're curious. Google that. Maybe it'll come up. It wants to come up. I've started this reading a few times. And then I've just gone on and on about what a metal dog is. So I'm trying not to. Um, but maybe this is particularly for people in the collective who were born in 1970. Who are somewhere between the age of 51 and 52. There's something going on for us and other people. Let's see. People who are between age 19 and 21. People 36 to 38. People 72 to 73. There's something going on because there is the seven eclipse cycle between Scorpio and Taurus of moons and suns eclipsing. It's going to be going on for two years. Uh, we've also entered what astrologers call eclipse season. This is transformative light is going to be shed on what needs to go, where you need to go, and how you need to lighten your load. This is about your health, your emotional and physical health. And the tarot wants to tell you something, and that's my job is to help it speak to you. So the card for the reading is the Moonstone. That's appropriate. The Moonstone, let's look this up. Let's keep this simple in, the, in terms of this oracle here. Moonstone here, 30. Soothing third eye tranquility. Ethereal beauty. The shifting cool colors give the moonstone a tranquil feel. Some cultures believe moonstone to be the moon's rays, solidified. It is said to aid with overcoming grief and stress and helps with strengthening intuition and clairvoyance. It is associated with the third eye Look into my third eye and the ground chakra. If you are in need of recharging, let the moonstone provide healing. I myself have been feeling very tired and I have been doing a lot of not doing as a result. And we also get on the bottom the sweet simpatico of the clownfish and the anemone. Two beings that support one another, protect one another in the sea. So that's a nice energy here that's underlying this. We also wanted to pull a card here from another tarot deck, but just as an oracle, again, to set the feeling for this reading, which is about healing and being supported and waiting <laughs> and the moon. So let's see here. What does Four Hawks I want to tell you? I'm feeling like performance anxiety, like I don't normally feel that, I just am just reading these cards. A three of earth, this collaboration between the fairy and the fox and the crow to pick this apple. And the apple, of course, is from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? There is a seven of fire, integrity, eight of earth, and justice. There is your connection to your planet and justice. Fantastic, powerful image of justice here. Good, I've been feeling like we need one of these big earth readings here. So let's see. We'll look at these as we pull tarot. But let's see what, what the tarot says. My very first deck, the Tarot of the Wild Unknown. I just said, Heather, let's talk to whoever wants to come here and get some message from Earth about justice, about integrity, about collaboration. You know, like both these cards are about you with the other beings that you, that your differences are to the benefit 
of whatever work you're doing. Like the fox is tall, the fairy has hands, and the bird can fly up and with the, her sharp beak can cut the apple from the tree. Um, and then if you read about the clownfish and the anemone, they have a very physical bond of feeding one another and protecting one another in, you know, very kind of graphically poopy ways, <laughs> which I find brings out my immaturity whenever I read it. Um, so yeah, let's see what the tarot wants to tell you about what's happening here, collective. Bear with me, because there's like a shyness on me. I'm not sure what that is. It's not my normal feeling, although I'm very shy. <laughs> I feel passivity in a reading that shows action and responsibility and collaboration, but everybody's doing something in this collaboration. So if you're feeling this passivity, you know, maybe that's coming through from you. Okay. I don't even know what reading I'm doing. Like, I don't know what the spread is. That's so weird. That's, this is never like this. So it's part of the reading. I want to know about this collaboration, justice, integrity. This is like, you are not alone. You are with others. So well, let's just do this seven card story here. Let's find out who you are, who you're with what's been happening, what's going to happen, what the advice is, what's hidden. I'm going to do the whole thing here. Okay, seven card spread. The recent past, lots of quick action, lots of talk. This is intellectual. Very direct. Could be a little bit rough, harsh, <laughs> truthful, um, but fast and decisive. Um, and in the present, you know, kind of Rising from this downward motion is judgment. You have done something in the past that has led you to be recognized as victorious in this cycle, and that you are now rising to the next level. Um, what I see is this is a larger scale um, separation between the light and the dark. Um, those who are still seeking to ascend, it's not that they're condemned, it's not like hell or something, but it is the earth, it is the darkness, it is the not knowing. This is a reading about understanding. Um, and of course, here I see the same kind of feeling of ascension from the, the shadows. Mm-hmm. What's hidden from you, the tarot wants you to know, is there's a repetition, the three of earth, the three of earth. We have the three of pentacles here twice. Um, this is important. This is what's hidden. And so you may be feeling alone. You may be feeling like this, alone, waiting for the moon, waiting for magic, for transformation, for healing. But there is this there's your there's some other balance or a group of others um that are here with you okay and we'll find out more this is very mysterious okay you are the emperor okay you've been decisive you've been stubborn <laughs> you're an aries um wow there's that eclipse Yes. Emperor here, these are the trees I live in. This is a ponderosa pine forest. And the emperor in the tarot represents structural power. So you somehow represent structural power or are an extremely decisive leader. Um, you are the one that says yes and no. Um, 
But there is something happening where you are feeling eclipsed here. Hmm. There's an eclipse. It's a, you're feeling the eclipse. Sorry. You're feeling the eclipse. You will feel it. You will feel all of these eclipses. Okay. Who is with you? Because this seems important that this is about collaboration. So, wow. Happiness. Here is the sun not hidden in the eclipse. Um, what we just had was a lunar eclipse. Um, the next one will be on... Uh, within the Scorpio Taurus cycle that we're in, the next one will be way in April. Um, but we also have another eclipse happening on the 4th. I believe it's a lunar eclipse. Um, and what happens in a lunar eclipse is the sun and the moon are opposite one another. It's a full moon. And the earth moves in between and blocks the sun from reflecting on the moon. Um, and then in the absence of light, you... Can, when this, the light returns, you can see things that, were la that you couldn't see before. Um, I think our minds do this interesting thing where we just get used to everything that, are, that is around us. We can take so much for granted, and our mind just gives a sketch. Like, we may not actually be seeing what's there, but we're seeing what's always been there. So when the light goes away and we miss something, we miss something that we've seen every day because the darkness comes um, when the when the eclipse ends we can see something that we needed to see for a very long time it can be something that you need to remove um, and that's what I think this sun sign is just showing us and again I see these birds um, around the four corners here much like the, in the card of judgment here. Um, yeah, this might be new people. I mean, the sun is the card of absolute authenticity, happiness, and wish fulfillment. It is the happiest card in the tarot. So that's the people around you. <laughs> um, and you are in an eclipse right now. So you're not seeing these people. That's what I'm getting. You're on a personal journey. You are also coming through like the sun. Right? You're ascending um, to meet these people. You're coming up here. That's what's happening. You've been going down in the past, downward motion. Um, yeah, this is about the collaboration in the next place you're going to. And it looks like you're feeling alone on the top of the mountain with your integrity. But when you get up there, there's going to be others who have also made it here. So what's the advice? The advice is eight of pentacles, which you also have here twice. This is a very repetitive reading. <laughs> Here's the eight of earth, eight of pentacles here. Again, we see the web of connections. This makes me also think of the sun. It makes me think of the roots in the earth of the of the trees, all their roots. The I'm having trouble. The mycelium of the fungus, which is an, a network that communicates. It looks very much like the neuro neuro scientific representations of our brains and of the way that matter maybe is organized in space. Although there are some recent theories questioning whether dark matter is needed in order to explain power, gravity. <laughs> and there is a six of pentacles in your future. This is your future. This is generosity. This is an extremely earthy and practical reading for somebody who's really leaving the earth. Um, you're being brought to another level of earth. It is the new earth that we are encountering here. It is abundant. Um, and you're supposed to just work. Do the work that you're doing to get here. Um, and now I'm meaning, now I'm told to put this up here, to look at this image of justice. It's a very mystical, earthy, I mean this 
Again, I think of Adam and Eve. Like, this is a restoration to the garden. Um, hmm. Well, on a very significant level of leaving behind a world of demons that... So historically, okay, 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 historically, this kind of tarot, um, the occult, um, non-Christian ways of knowing the divine were, were labeled by Christians as demonic. Um, and what that actually meant was that when Adam and Eve fell, because they ate the apple, right? And we see this little team picking the apple. <laughs> um, when they ate of the apple, the punishment was to be expelled from a garden. And there were other punishments like hierarchy between men and women and pain of childbirth and labor. But with the punishment was the loss of balance that is represented by justice of, of your body, of your health, um, but also a loss of knowledge of the earth, um, of connection to the earth and of knowing your connection. And so all of these other spiritual practices got cast as bad, as negative, and they get associated with the demonic. Um, and so this is very much a reading about returning to these lost knowledges um, and to the new earth that is being anticipated uh, within various communities who would be um, characterized as a part of occult practices. Uh, although you can totally do this in a way that is very sympathetic with Christianity, if that is your thing, like simpatico between Christianity and the occult um, is possible. Um, but historically, uh, the reason it's seen as like something that I was even just scared to get into because, you know, I, I had an old taught belief that there, there was something very dark and evil here, but there's in fact beautiful light a beautiful encounter with earth that can be had through this kind of work. Um, and that is what this message is about. Calling you back to know your earth, um, to another earth. It's an old earth and it's a new earth and it is abundant and this is the work that you do and you will do it with others. So let's clarify. It's weird because I read that about the moonstone and then I don't remember what it said. Um, it's like I've, I missed something. The moon's rays solidified, overcoming grief and stress, strengthening intuition and clairvoyance associated with the third eye. Okay, so this is about healing, grieving the old world. That the emperor, that you somehow represent and that you're feeling eclipsed right now even though you're also currently going through ascension. You're the people, there are people that know better than you what to do right now. And it's uncomfortable because you have been the emperor. But let's see, what does the tarot want to say? These are just, this is just what's coming into my mind as I look at these cards and listen to this story. I'm kind of excited. So let's see what else we can we can learn here. So recently you were with the Son of Swords, this fast downward intellectual thought process. Um, further thought process, the Queen of Swords, really like cutting people out, clarity also. The reason that she cuts people out is because she realizes, oh, these aren't the people that I'm supposed to be working with right now. So since you were clearly meeting new people, in your future. There's a new collaboration ahead with people of the sun, of the light. Um, yeah, and that's a, another thing, like, I am a historian, and within my sources of French Protestants coming to Florida in the 1500s, they're saying the people there worship the sun. But this was actually a Celtic tradition, a long, old European tradition of, like, as, as a part of astrology, but in also, like, pagan, pantheistic practice of 
of thanking the sun, of, of working with the, the coming and going of the light, um, celebrating the seasons, the harvests, the spring. Um, so all of that is a part of this community that you are coming into and in order to get there. And the eclipse teaches you this. Perhaps you begin to realize this on November 19th, that the people that you're hanging out with, not all of them are going to come here with you because there's going to be new people there. So there's a kind of loneliness to this part of the path here. Um, there's also the King of Wands here in the recent past. Very much like the Emperor, very alpha, very um, decisive. So we have the, what else? Um, and the Princess of Discs. Yes, so this is Princess of Discs. It's, this is a very practical, grounded, beginning, um, young start here. Um, I feel like in a funny way, these are people that are good that you've been meeting that you met recently. Like you went down, like it's almost like you were in a moon journey and you met these cool earth people. You met these magical, powerful, practical earth based, like earthlings. Like I keep thinking that we're earthlings. Like we're of this planet, all of us are. And um, many of us have forgotten our relationship to earth. Uh, and we are involved in rediscovering this relationship to earth. Um, and there, you're not alone, you feel alone, but this is um, something that many are doing right now. Many are manifesting and arriving at what is being called a new earth. And, um, and so this king of wands, this queen of swords, this princess of discs, you are the son of swords in, in the recent past. You were going down, you were looking into the truth, you were facing the darkness, that you have to face on a moon journey where you decide in the eclipse, like who needs to stay, who needs to go? Where is my passion? Where is my direction? How do I, um, to, how do I get with in this community of people who believe, who hope, who aspire um, for this transformation? Wow, so that's, that's you now in the present where that's what's happening right now in the present you met those people in the recent past you wanted what they had they inspired you you recognized yourself and there's something really about like how your world was black and white and not all the cards in this deck are black and white there's color in in this deck um, and then you went it's almost like the wizard of oz and there's the first witch, the good witch, Glenda. Um, so these are magical people that you met and they brought you out of the world of black and white. And so now you're flying book up out of that, full of light, full of light, out of this black and white world. Okay, judgment, also change. There's all that color again, this is there's the bird that we see, we keep seeing again and again, this bird. And there's also the snake. This is about ascension. This is about transformation. This is about shedding your old skin. When you get the wheel of fortune, change is coming. It is in your favor. It is good luck. It is good fortune, but it's massive change. There's the emperor. This is you. Okay. This is how you appear in this reading is this structural person who has been invested and, and empowered structurally. Um, yeah, he has the sun behind him, right? The sun is beaming out from behind him. Again, you are in some way blocking the light. Um, this is going to change. Um, or there's this blocking of the light. Here and the emperor is blocking the light. Structural power. Maybe you are not the emperor. Maybe you are a part of this light. Yes, 
That's what it is. You're a part of this light. So if we look at this card, there's the eclipse. And this is what's missing. It's you. You're missing. You're missing from your own reading. You're the sun. You're a part of this community here. And you're you're going to re-encounter yourself here. And there's the Hierophant, again, with the light shining out. This is the teacher. This is also the church. We have the church and the state blocking the light. This is change happening. Massive change happening. Wow, this is what is I am hearing. Okay, this is crazy because it, this feels big. Um, it feels big and I feel like I can't even, I don't even have time to be embarrassed. Like, <laughs> I don't feel embarrassed. I do feel like, uh, okay, let's keep going. The tarot says this is hidden from you. This is the collaboration. This is a sacred mountain where I live. I live under a sacred mountain. It's right there to the north of my, right out my window. There's trees between it. They look like the emperor. The, that is what is between me and the mountain. These beautiful pine trees. Um, the relationship in my community to this mountain is fraught. It's fraught with late capitalism. We have a company up there that has a ski resort. They have earned, won the power through the system to put polluted water on that mountain so that people can ski, so they can make money off people skiing. They're putting water on the sacred mountain. This is a great sin against the earth and against this mountain. Um, we all feel it here in, in my little town. Um, indigenous people have been fighting and they will keep fighting until that stops. It's not over when you lose the first battle. You just keep resisting. And we have seen that historically in this area. Never ending one lawsuit after the other, just patiently resisting for hundreds of years here by indigenous people who are the protectors of the earth. Okay, so with this, this community, the lovers, the sun again, the lovers is a choice. It is the divine, it is the connection on all levels of body, soul, of heart, of mind, It is choosing um, this divine love over the lower kinds of, you know, I'm not going to disavow the body and desire and pleasure here, but there is, there's a lot of this is being called to the light, rising to that. And not everybody chooses, says yes to the lovers. Um, many say no because it's scary, because it is transformative. Um, you're going to say yes. Uh, this is like, again, the anemone and the clownfish. Like one thing that we learn is that the clownfish poops and it feeds the anemone. Like this is like, it's not for everybody, this kind of intimate connection that's like really intimate. Um, a lot of people are afraid of the dark, of the darkness. Um, you are not. This community that you're coming into, they have been to the darkness and therefore they are of light. This is the way. And you have been there too. What else? Ten of Wands. There's a burden to put down. This is a really fantastic Ten of Wands. It's like the cicada. I don't know what it is. I'm going to look it up. This is a fantastic card. Look at, there's the person in the bug. I mean, it's so bizarre. Usually the Ten of Wands, it's like you finish the wand cycle, it's a burden. I'd call it the quit your job card. But this is, again, this is a image, this image of rising, this image of rising from the earth. Um, I see that here, these wings, this winged rising from the burden that you put down. Let's see. Let's look this up. Very curious about this card. Oh, it's the wrong deck. Never mind. That book is in the other room. <laughs> okay. 
That's okay though, because this bug is coming out of the earth after a long time. So I'm gonna say it's the cicadas. They recently hatched, right? They go, they're under the earth for like 30 years. And then they come up and they eat everything and the birds have a party. And it's like a very abundant, um, it's abundance. One more, one more card here for what's hidden. The King of Cups. This is the good king of the heart. I feel like he has magical powers. Look how he's like levitating that one cup and he's offering the other. He's like juggling. And I noticed that his ankle is tied. Um, it's like a sneaky tie here. Um, you can see like the red tie. It has like a snake's belly on it. So again, we're seeing that shedding of your skin. Um, this is an incredibly magical, powerful collaboration that you get to be a part of here. That's This is what you don't know. The, the lovers, it's like the people of your heart. The person too, it could be your other, is here. So if you've been personally like feeling alone, um, there is community and there might be the particular one. Um, the King of Cups is a card of Scorpio, um, which is simply a, another message of transformation, of rising from the ashes. Um, there's a lot of rising from some ending. Um, and the Moonstone let me know that there's grief here, that you have perhaps lost something or are losing something and you're grieving it. And the cicada is putting down a burden in the Ten of Wands and is rising up from sleep to a new day. And there is a person in this bug somehow. I, unfortunately, the guidebook to that is just strangely written by an actor who's talking about her life in Whole Foods and Santa Monica, and <laughs> there's not a lot of explanation of these really provocative images. So they are for us to read. See what you see. This is a burden. This is putting it down, and then you feel light and you fly. And I don't know what is the person in the bug. This is where he's supposed to be born again. There's a lot of rebirth here. Okay, you are appearing as the emperor, and you are also the sun. This is the people around you. This is your people. Remember, this is you eclipsed right now. You're the sun behind the shadow of the moon, of the earth. You're the moon. You're the sun. Your light is blocked by the structural power. So there you are, the sun. There's lots of ascending to your very self. So a part of this journey is that you've, you've sought. You've sought teachers, helpers, people like you. You're finding them. They're here as you discover who you are. Um, as you come out from the light of, that you seek, that the light is of the eclipse brings things to light. <laughs> These are my notes over here. And so you are, your very self is being brought to the light in this eclipse cycle. There's judgment again. There you are being brought up by this beautiful angel. There's the sun that supports this angel and there's all the birds flying up. So, reiteration and temperance. Angel Michael, one foot on land, one foot in water, measuring carefully, taking time. This is a process. It takes time. Careful. There's patience in you. Um, the water represents the emotions. The land represents um, the practical 3D world, but it can also represent the, the water that is life, and the, the land that is earth. And, and this balancing. Um, there's other things 
in the background in this image there's a tower suggests the tower which is a surprise ending and then there's a little island out there these are little episodes um, in this journey we're part of what's being balanced the island just has a single tree on it like Yes, there's a, so much flight here, um, but also it's t it's a process of taking time to rise here to this new place, to being yourself as the sun. Okay, so the people around you, people that are up at this next level, it's the sun. They're like you. They're authentic, honest, joyful people. What else? Yeah, they're the fool, believers, full of faith, going off on the journey that seems crazy to everybody else. The little dog's like, go, go, or leap, leap. And she's got, she travels light. She is carrying a wand over her shoulder, her willpower, her inspiration. I see the sun in the sky. I see it reflected in the flower. I see that little island too. Like, if you step off the edge, there will be somebody there to catch you. The Nine of Wands. These are people who have come from struggle. Nine of Wands is, I'm tired, I have been struggling. You can look at all of the phases of that struggle, but this person is, again, ready to walk free of that burden that is the card that precedes the ten of wands the cicada putting down that burden but you're tired you're wise they that's who these people are they're fools they have liberated themselves from struggle and they are also very okay this is the four of swords it's about going alone healing this person is levitating the birds again here they are the blackbirds here, the blackbirds. Um, this is a part of the process, is being one of these blackbirds, um, flying at this place. This is a part of healing. And then you go to the next level, to the sun. So these are people that have, like you, they've been on this journey. It has been long, it has been slow, and yeah, they're just people who are light, like the fool. They travel light because they've gone through this Four of Swords healing, mourning, grieving process. Yeah, and I see the circle, the shadow that she leaves on the earth. Like, it reminds me again of the eclipse, and there's the sun above. So the people around you are like you. That's what it, I feel like I'm saying that over and over, and over again. Um, you're ascending together. You won't be alone. You are people of the light of the sun. And there's snakes and birds. This is flight. This is transformation. It is something that has been eclipsed, blackened out, darkened, hidden by structural power, the emperor, the hierophant. Now it's changing. This is changing. Okay, your advice is the Eight of Pentacles. Do your work. You're skilled at this work. Again, the web makes us think of that sun, of the rays of the sun of you. Like, this is you building yourself. This is a part of the process of coming here, of being this, of choosing this. There's so many images of this. Okay, <laughs> your advice. Do this work. What is it? What else? Princess of Cups. There's young people. There is youthful lightness to this work. So be joyful as you do this work. <laughs> Offer come from your heart. Uh, there's the devil. You must face 
your codependence, your sense that you are not good enough. This will keep you in bondage. This is the opposite of the lovers. This is a part of the process that you must go through. This is your work. Right? These people are facing this too. Your friends. The ones that are going to be there when you get there. And Seven of Discs. More about putting in the work, waiting for the fruits of your labor to bear fruit. Hmm. This person is dark and they are in shadow. They're strangely raking. <laughs> Look, this is a very weird seven of earth, <laughs> seven of pentacles, dis, whatever. People's heads, like statues, it's the old world. It's the old, like I think of like Rome falling and then it's over and there's just the remnants, the ruins. And then you, this person who's still in shadow, like you haven't, it's like the old black and white world of this, right? When you were in the black and white world and then you met all these people of color and they showed you what magic there could be in the world. This is you just beginning to like connect to how the earth will grow over the ruins of the old world, this new earth. And you just, you don't even know who you are. You're just putting in the work. You're facing towards the devil on the table. This is how the cards are oriented on the table. There's the devil. There's you holding the cup. It's like, I'll drink to that. And there's you just raking and just, you guys are not afraid to look at this, your addiction, your codependence, your idea that you're not good enough, that voice in your head that says you're a failure, you're a loser. That's a liar, right? Shame is always a lie. But you don't, you're just learning that. You're, this is the work you have to do to ascend. You're doing it. There's a lot more happening here that's not all about your labor, but it's all you can do. <laughs> because the Wheel of Fortune is here, all you can do is just carry on until it's time. It's divine time that you're on. And there's nothing you can do but just do what is obvious, what's in front of you. And it, it this is a, another image of, of the Eight of Earth. It's very beautiful. It is very involved. It's taking... There's a lot of action here, um, and it is coming from justice, like this mystical balancing of earth. There's lots of balancing here, another image of that, the pouring of water back and forth, the stepping of, on land and of water, um, waiting for the right mixture. Yeah, so we've heard this, right? We're waiting, we're doing our work, is going to help us to rise to this place of light where all of the other people of light are. The light that has been obscured, that is that the eclipse shows us what's been hidden. And the future is abundance, and it is here a Six of Pentacles. Very simple. Earthly abundance. Pentacles are of earth, of the practical. It's also generosity here. Um, a generous, abundant future. This is what you've been gardening, right? You've been sort of, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm <laughs> just raking. <laughs> yeah, and this is what you've been growing in the future. Can we know a little bit more about that? King of Swords. There's a wisdom here of the King of Swords. Even though he's, of course, man-spreading, which I've talked about. In the, <laughs> I knew I was going to see the hangman waiting. There's the sun rays coming from his head. That is wisdom that you get when you hang from the Tree of Life. Oh my gosh, there's that Tree of Life in the Garden of Eden. The Tree of the Knowledge of Good and Evil. All of the apples, remember? 
we are picking these, our team of sun people. <laughs> All of our differences adding up to a strategy for picking this fruit. Um, and then here you are. This tree has more like oranges on it. But yes, you hang upside down. You're not bound to it, but you are kind of advised to be stuck here until you see things from this new direction. And this goes for me with the Six of Pentacles, which is very much also about charitable giving and its generosity. So it has a hierarchical piece to it, either giving or receiving. Um, it's one of the cards and the Three of Swords. There is grief in this reading. They're seeing from grief. Ah, yes. That's the wisdom of the King of Swords. This is his, this is his heart. He is wise. He is the philosopher king because he has used this truth, which can be harsh. It can be like a weapon, right? Like it hurts, right? But when you go out and you into the world and you wield the truth like that, what you also can see is like this hurts others. Um, and so everybody's living from this wound in their heart. This is how they see everything is from this. So the, the perspective change that the King of Swords has is that the truth isn't enough. You have to have, you have to care for, be kind to the hearts of others. Um, underlying two cards. Beautiful. The Three of Wands. Just wait. There's the birds again. There's the ascension. There's you kind of the still in shadow, still waiting for what you need to know to ascend. It's this lesson of the heart. It's not just book learning. It's not just science. It's an emotional um, truth. It's a gentleness. The people of this new earth are gentle heart sun people. Um, and then to get there, you have to learn to be kind. Um, and this is you learning. You want to get there. You're willing to do it. But it is a process of waiting. And then there it is, there's your heart, the Ace of Cups. This is true love, divine love, love of self. This is, um, it feels like communal and it feels like romantic. It's like a soul, it's all the loves are here in this new place. And that, my friends, is an amazing reading to have been privileged to channel for you today. And there was nothing less than the feeling of channeling. Um, this wasn't me just being clever and reading these cards. This is, um, this is what can happen with the tarot. And I hope it helps you just do your work, learn to be kind. You have this, um, the basis of Whatever in you that is sharp, that cuts, is this, carries a sword, this, this one. This is what you are ascending from. Like, the reason that you have been hurtful is because of the devil, which is just a sense that you're not good enough, that you don't deserve to move to this place, this beautiful new earth. To return to the garden is another way of looking at it. And you're afraid to take the leap of faith, but you're supported by people who um, are fools. And and not because they haven't struggled, they also have the Nine of Wands here. They've had to heal too from struggle. Um, you're supported by them and you're supported by the divine and, and you are divine. Um, you are ascending to a new place with help with support, with others, and with love um, of all kinds. All the kinds of love you could want are there. And you're not dying. This isn't about dying and going to heaven. 
this is on this real 3D plane um, that you're going somewhere new here with others. Um, when you learn how to be kind, when you learn how to come from your heart, um, not just your mind. And I feel like this is something, a process that we're all in and we're all in different parts of this journey here. Um, and I'm one of these people of the sun and I'm on this journey too with you. And, um, and it's like, I don't want to leave this reading because I feel our connection to one another. Um, and sometimes I, I do these readings and I'm, I'm the only one that watches it. So that's okay if it's just a reading for me. Um, but if it's also your reading, um, you know, I'll, I'll see you there. Um, we're, we're going to be there wherever this is, uh, soon, soon we're learning and changing. And so is our planet. So is our relationship to the planet. And that's what these eclipses want to tell us today. So the tarot has this message for us today. So take or leave. I hope you have a beautiful day.